Good morning, Joe. As we come up on 9.49 a.m. here on the East Coast, a new book is sounding the alarm on how communities of color are being left behind in the American health care system. In Legacy, a black physician reckons with racism in medicine. Dr. Uche Blackstock shines a light on the historical and ongoing racism in the medical field and its harmful impact on black communities. Dr. Blackstock also shares several of her own deeply personal experiences, including a nearly fatal case of appendicitis that was initially misdiagnosed. And Dr. Blackstock joins us now. She is also an emergency medical physician and founder and chief executive of Advancing Health Equity, which aims to engage with healthcare organizations to dismantle racism in the industry. A familiar face also to way too early viewers. Dr. Blackstock, great to see you. Congratulations Thank on the you. book. So let, let's start there with just tell us a little bit, if you will, about some of these personal experiences that motivated you to explore this topic and then write this book? Right, well, well, first, thank you so much for having me. I think what's important to know is that I am a second generation black woman physician, and to say that is incredibly rare. Um, less than 3% of all physicians are black women. Um, so I'm, in a sense, a unicorn, but that is because of systemic barriers that exist. But I share in this book some personal experiences, losing my mother before the age, by the age of 47 to a blood cancer that is very rare, <laughs> and really thinking about how the impact of racism could have shortened her life. I also had my own experiences, as you mentioned, with appendicitis that went misdiagnosed after three ER visits that led to a perforated appendix and further complications as a medical student, leading me to miss a month of medical school. So a lot of personal experiences that I used to talk about these larger systemic issues. Black, Dr. Blackstock, one of the things that grips uh, my, my, me about the book is not only do you talk about your personal health challenges and the systemic problem of racism in the medical field, but it's in your blood to fight and deal with these things. Your mother, you, I'm from Brooklyn, you're from Brooklyn. Your mother used to do a lot of health work, clinics, fairs in, in the Brooklyn community when uh, there was hardly any idea of black women being a physician. Now you and your sister carrying that on and the experience of that. Talk about how the systemic racism was something you grew up with, committed to dealing with, and how your mother helped pioneer that and what it means yeah. to you. Thank you for asking about that, Reverend Al, because my mother led a small group of black women physicians in central Brooklyn that organized uh, community health fairs, that right. checked blood pressure, uh, linked uh, uh, patients with physicians to help manage their diabetes. They were doing this grassroots work when, <clears throat> when health equity did not even have that term. So they were addressing the consequences of racism in the 80s and 90s in our communities in a grassroots way when we weren't even really openly discussing it like we are now. So I really wanted to shine a light on that because now we're seeing the black maternal mortality crisis. We're seeing that black mothers are three to four times more likely to die of pregnancy-related complications. That even me with my college degree and medical degree from Harvard, I'm still five times more likely to die of pregnancy-related complications than my white counterparts. So these are the issues that we need to talk about because there is nothing inherently wrong with black people, but there's something inherently wrong with the systems that we live in that essentially make us sick and lead to our shortened lives. Truly terrible statistics. Uh, Dr. Blackstock, uh, Katty Kay has the next question. Uh, doctor, thank you for writing the book. I love the word legacy because it's also part of your family's amazing legacy. To have three doctors in one family is remarkable, especially when there are so few black female doctors in the country. But talk a little bit about how you look in the book at the history of the medical system, how there were really no opportunities for black people to learn medicine because there weren't medical schools that admitted um, black people in American history and how that the legacy of that impacts the kinds of the kinds of data that you've just spoken about and the disparities between healthcare for black and white people still in the country. Right, well, thank you so much for asking that question because we look at today and say, why are there so few black doctors? And that's because of, of reports and policies like the Flexter report in 1910 that led to the closure of historically black medical schools, five out of seven medical schools that would have trained between 25 and 35,000 black doctors. And so we think about this recent SCOTUS decision on race conscious admissions and how that could have a similar impact on the diversity of our healthcare workforce and ultimately on the health of black communities. The new book, 
titled Legacy, A Black Physician Reckons with Racism in Medicine, is now on sale. Dr. Uche Blackstock, thank you very much for being thank here. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Reverend Al. And Joe, as we...